Due to the nature of a very long video, I'm going to be making a very short version of that video. You see, in a video I made about Falun Gong, I was basically leaving gaps, making me sound like a kind of English William Shatner. But I didn't really want to do that, but it came across like that because of the way I was actually making the video and reading off a basic kind of note script. And so I decided to put it together in a very simple manner, right here, right now. The belief known as Falun Gong was started by Master Li. Master Li, he himself, basically claims a level of knowledge, a kind of enlightenment. He's the centre of the belief, but many people in the belief are not very devout. They follow certain practices, but don't follow the guru founder to the absolute degree. However, people within the inner group of the organisation certainly do. If we are to note the various different ideas within the organisation, there are many which are quite peculiar. They have the emphasis upon a kind of Tai Chi, upon certain types of meditation, and they have one idea which is quite interesting, the idea that there's some kind of, well, mirror inside your mind, which, through meditation, you can turn facing upwards, which allows you to become enlightened. So-called Master Lee has made many claims about the nature of reality. He's claimed there are giant space women, women the size of galaxies out there in space. He's made claims about different coloured skin people. He said that people of different ethnicities should not mix. He's also made a claim that there are white people, black people, yellow people, but there are also flower-skinned people. Master Lee, the founder of Falun Gong, lives in relative luxury. He lives like a very rich man because he is quite a rich man. He has several properties in New York and New Jersey and basically lives quite well, despite having no validity for his claims of enlightenment other than taking previously existing ideas and putting his own spin upon them and using a very broad and easy to accept philosophy. What we're talking about is a widely spread belief from a person who cannot know what he claims to know. He cannot confirm that he is able to know these things, that he has any capacity beyond that of the average individual. It's a kind of pyramid scheme where those at the bottom don't really see what's going on. Those in the middle are the ones who give a great amount of influence. Very often practitioners, and of course I do mean the more devout practitioners in a great many cases, and then you have those at the very top who are truly the cult within Falun Gong. To keep the people in line, there are so many conspiracy theories, most of which based around the Chinese Communist Party. Surely if you're a critic, you're being supported by the Chinese Communist Party, even though, in actuality, you'll find many secular and separate sources from those of Falun Gong and those of the Chinese Communist Party, which are willing to offer evidence for various claims. The claim of special persecution of Falun Gong in China seems to be mostly focused around its leadership and, of course, the exile of its leader. And certainly, I would say, comparable to any other group in general within China itself. Note that the cult experts are not describing Falun Gong as being a dangerous cult in the same sort of league as, say, for example, Jim Jones and the People's Temple. However, they are saying there are various characteristics that people should be aware of. Certain things are being done which are not necessarily all that good. Claims based on bad evidence or no evidence, pseudoscience, pseudohistory, and other such ideas. There's also the claim that people who have reached a level of awakeness or enlightenment basically have the capacity to heal themselves. The only problem with this, it's not complementary medicine or complementary healing, it's more to do with the idea that you do not need medication, you do not need medical professionals, you do not need assistance because you can do it yourself. Now the big difference between these sorts of ideas and the actual group itself is at what level you belong to within the organisation, within the movement itself. If you're merely a person who's affiliated, you're not going to be a person who goes, right, I'm going to avoid medical science because I believe I can magically make myself well. This is especially true if you live in the first world. However, if you live outside the first world, or you're a particularly devout person, or a person who happens to be higher up within the movement itself, and naturally more devout, you're going to stick to the word of the belief. It's worth pointing out that with various natural disasters over the years, 
Falun Gong has gloated over the harm done. Okay, the Chinese government might well be pretty damn evil, but let's be honest, we should not gloat over the suffering of human beings. Plus, when it's a natural disaster, I don't think negativity from the Chinese communists is the cause as much as tectonic movement. As in the case of an earthquake, which killed a great many people and made a million people homeless. The sources of information for these videos has come from various organisations, not least the Cult Education Institute. Excuse me, I'd just like to ask a question. What does God need with a starship?